A federal judge has ruled that the controversial Texas voter ID law intentionally discriminates against minority voters. The ruling is a victory for civil rights advocates who've been fighting the law since it was passed by the Texas legislature in 2011. U.S. District Judge Nelva Gonzalez Ramos wrote in her decision that the plaintiff's evidence established that discrimination was, quote, at least one of the substantial or motivating factors behind passage of the bill. She also pointed out that, quote, evidence of a pattern unexplainable on grounds other than race, such as proposed changes to the law that was rejected by the Texas legislature that would have eased the negative effect on minority voters. One of the plaintiffs in the case, the Texas NAACP, said, quote, sadly, this is one more instance of the state that many of us love so deeply being found to have engaged in intentional discrimination against citizens of color. At some point, this discrimination based on the color of Texas citizens must stop. Also, folks, this is the fifth time, the fifth time a court has ruled that the Texas voter ID law is intentionally discriminatory. Now, in February, the Trump Department of Justice announced it was withdrawing from the legal battle waged by the Obama administration against the Texas law. In fact, they even said that they were not going uh, to focus on the discriminatory impact of the law. Joining us by phone from D.C. is Christian Clark, President and Executive Director of the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law. Christian, here was interesting here. Uh, this is a clear slapdown of the Trump administration. Here you have Attorney General Jeff Sessions, so-called lauded during his confirmation hearings about being a advocate for civil rights, but he clearly sided on the side of Texas in this case, but this federal judge makes it clear that his DOJ is wrong, Trump is wrong, Texas is wrong. Right, this Attorney General Jeff Sessions is off to a bad start. Uh, this is one of the earliest things that he did during his tenure. He made the 11th hour decision uh, to abandon the intent claim, the argument that this law was adopted with a discriminatory purpose. It was truly remarkable. We and some of the other groups that have been fighting this law literally were boarding planes, bags in hand, heading down to Texas for this critical argument when we received a call from the Justice Department indicating that they would no longer be standing shoulder to shoulder with us, making the argument that the law was adopted with a discriminatory purpose. So yesterday's ruling is a vindication of the position that we've long been taking, which is that this law is infected with discriminatory purpose at every stage and should be fully rendered null and void. Well, and also, I, I believe that anybody uh, who is an advocate of civil rights, uh, who is against voter suppression, uh, has to take the position that this Trump administration doesn't give a damn about minority voters, doesn't care about discriminatory impact. Uh, they are going to make political decisions, siding with Republicans who have been pushing voter suppression consistently since, uh, first of all, for the longest, but definitely since 2010 at the election of President Barack Obama in 2008. That's right. At every turn, we're seeing evidence that this Justice Department and Attorney General Sessions in particular stands fully opposed to civil rights. We knew that Sessions brings with him a record of great hostility on civil rights. We can't forget his actions last week attempting to obstruct a carefully negotiated police uh, uh, department consent decree. Uh, one that was backed by the mayor and by police officials and by the community. Um, the one person standing as an obstacle to reform was Mr. Sessions. Here he attempted to do the same. He attempted to the, disrupt this litigation, but the judge saw the writing on the wall and issued a short 10-page ruling that makes clear that Texas knew that this law would have a discriminatory uh, effect on African-American and Latino voters, and despite that, statistical data adopted the law anyway. Um, it, this is also not the first time that Texas has been shot down for taking action that's intentionally discriminatory. A court last month in a redistricting case found that officials acted with discriminatory purpose. 
all of this is such a reminder about why we need the uh, important provisions that have been in place under the Voting Rights Act prior to a 2013 Supreme Court ruling. Since that time, groups like the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law have been fighting case after case across the country against voter suppression uh, efforts and discriminatory measures like the one in place in Texas. Christian, hold tight one second. Here in Atlanta, folks, is our panel, Derek Bozeman, WAOK Radio Weekday host, Lynn May, journalist and communications consultant, and Daryl Wilson, the CEO of Wilson Mediation. Uh, again, when you look at this particular case, when you look at North Carolina, when you look at Alabama, when you, we can go down the line where Republicans are in control of the legislature and the governor's mansion, uh, there is a consistent effort uh, to suppress the vote. They know the numbers are changing. They are angry with the massive black turnout. They elected President Barack Obama in 2008 and 2012. And I don't care what anyone says, they're going to continue to try to deny minorities the right to vote. They are not about defending civil rights. Absolutely not. This shouldn't be a surprise to us. The question is, if you add gerrymandering to that, we can be, we're on the road to disenfranchisement. I think it's very clear that those who love freedom, those who love justice, those who think that civil rights are important, we've just got to gear up to fight. The other side has drawn a line in the sand and made it very, very clear that when it comes to voter suppression, when it comes to all kind of bills. Here in Georgia, we had just passed in this legislative session a very clear gerrymandering bill where an incumbent, two incumbents, whose districts had gotten down to 51 percent Republican performing, they said, oh, no, we can't have that. We're going to take some of the white people uh, out of the district that's in a black district, uh, take some of the black people out of that district, put them in a black district with black constituencies because we need some of the white uh, uh, people to be in the district where we're trying to gerrymander to, for a white uh, a representative uh, uh, lives and happen to serve. And so I think it's very clear uh, this is going to be a fight and we might as well just say what it is and get ready for it. Uh, I think that uh, part of what we need to do is try to expose uh, kind of the central truth about this. It, it is politics, and gerrymandering goes on on both sides. You know, if you're a Republican state, it's going to be leaning Republican. If you're a Democrat, it's going to lean Democrat. I think what they're trying to do in Texas is try to find the right thing. You know, how do we uh, get voter ID to everyone? That's uh, something that Texas wants to do. But they need to do it cheaply so that everyone can be uh, afford to do it. But actually, that's not what they're trying to do. I mean, what they're trying to do is, again, this Texas voter ID uh, will impact some six hundred thousand uh, minorities uh, and so what they desperately want to do is uh, they don't want Texas uh, uh, flipping you look at what happened uh, in uh, this past election uh, significant wins by Democrats in three of the largest counties in Texas Dallas County and Harris County where Houston is and Bear County where San Antonio is uh, then you throw in Travis County where Austin uh, and so again you see the numbers also Texas is getting 500,000 new citizens every single month the reason they got five new congressional seats was because of the influx of Latinos in that state. They actually turned four of those seats into Republican seats, one into a Democratic seat. Those th That was also uh, thrown out as well. And so what you're dealing with is, uh, as Lynn said, a combination of, between voter ID and racial gerrymandering. Uh, you don't see it to this extent on the Democratic side as you do on the Republican side. No, absolutely not. Not only that, they do it under the guise of voter fraud. And there's so little voter fraud in, fact, in this when, country. In fact, the Texas uh, folks, am I correct, Christian, when they went to court, they only presented 12 cases of alleged voter fraud right. in a decade. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the judge pointed to that and, claimed, and and used that to show that this so-called vote fraud justification that they were using to support the law uh, was a lie, it was thin, didn't stand up. Um, voter suppression and voting discrimination, it, that's exactly right, Roland. Um, this is not a matter of politics. This is about locking African Americans and Latinos out of the process. And there were more than 600,000 people in Texas who were registered voters who were disenfranchised when this law was put on the books. Whether we're talking about photo ID laws, purging of the voter rolls, moving polling sites to locations deemed hostile by the minority community. Sadly, these are so many things that we're seeing in 2017 across our country. 
Well, clearly, now that we have uh, nine folks, first of all, clearly Texas, they're going to uh, appeal this decision. Uh, it will go through uh, the courts. No doubt it will likely go to the Supreme Court. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man was shot to kill by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air, and you still get shot by the cops. Oh, my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not going to let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. We will keep focus on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.